How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this asphalt material with nodes. So this is a hundred percent procedural material tutorial, no images used. So let's go ahead and jump straight into getting an object. This being procedural, you can use whatever object you want to use. I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple icosphere and I'm going to do a little bit of subdividing it because I want it to just be a perfect circle. I tend to make all of my materials on circles. So let's go straight to shading and start working on this design. So I'm going to click the new button right here and we're going to get shift a click on search and we're going to get in a color ramp. So let's plug the color ramp here and then let's go ahead and get in a bump node. shift a click search B U M. We'll plug the bump straight into the normal. So we're going to get these two guys here and let's go and get in a Voronoi V O R Voronoi texture. Let's go ahead and switch from F1 to distance to edge. Now I'm going to plug the distance into each one of these sockets, the factor on the color ramp and the height of the bump node. So now we have this, we can go ahead and bring the scale up pretty high because this will be the basis of the rocks of the bottom of our asphalt. So we're going to kind of use something similar to this. We're going to keep it right on that side so we can kind of see what's going on. Now we're going to go here from linear to B spline. What this is going to do is make a much smoother gradient between colors. And let's go ahead and bring this color up. So now we're getting some kind of rocky textures here. I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of a uh, lighter gray than it is. So it's no longer black. And then we're going to make this and make it a pretty dark something like this. So now we have the basis of the colors of our asphalt and you can kind of play with these so you can kind of see where it shows up if we zoom in you can see that gradient happening within our asphalt so we have that b spline in there so when we move these it's not a very harsh color phase so we can bring this color in so go ahead and just kind of go around and make it look similar to this we're already getting a very road looking um, color here so now let's go ahead and get this voronoi texture and uh, we do need to do one thing is uh, go to your preferences here and make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So if you just type in node in the preferences, you'll see node wrangler, click that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click the Voronoi texture and hit control T. That's gonna get me my mapping and texture coordinate system here. So we, when we reuse this material, we can use it on a bunch of different objects and we don't have to worry about a bunch of distortion and things like that. That being said, let's go back and change the scale. So we're kind of back to where we started, around 124 for me. And we have this. Now, let's go ahead and kind of distort this pattern. To me, it's a little too sharp. To me, it's a little too unnatural um, with some of these details. So let's go ahead, search a noise texture. Plug the noise texture here. Let's get this mapping node in. And then one really cool trick is if you hold down shift and right click, you'll make these go into this little motion right here. And then to move this, you can hit G. So what I'm going to do, the reason why I did that is because I do want to add another thing right here so a let's get a mix rgb here plug that right there and we're going to get the noise texture and plug it here so let's move this factor all the way over here so we can just focus on the noise texture i'm going to go ahead and give my detail up to 12 and my roughness pretty far up something like that so now that we have that i want these two to kind of reveal at different portions so i'm going to go ahead and utilize this little factor socket right here so let's bring the mix up I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift D on this noise texture and duplicate it. And I'm gonna plug the, plug the vector into the vector right there. So now what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna highlight these guys. I'm gonna hit G to move some space over because I do wanna put a color ramp right here. So let's go ahead, search that up, color ramp, place it here, place the factor into the factor and the color into the factor of the mix RGB. So what this is going to do is work similar to a mix shader here. Mix RGBs deal with RGB channels, channels, not channels, and um, mix, uh, mix shaders deal with shaders. So let's go ahead and get this right here and kind of bring this black portion of the color ramp in, and then this will kind of reveal the parts of the noise section. What this, so what this is doing is adding some subtle details here into our piece. So now we have a more realistic looking asphalt material with some more imperfections in the actual pattern. So you can see how it's flattening out that Voronoi. So initially it's very sharp. When we flatten out that pattern, we're kind of mixing the two to talk to each other in a certain way. And if you play 
with the distribution here on the scale. You can play with that distribution. And if you don't like that particular pattern, you can go from 3D to 4D. And what this does is it, it uh, incorporates a seed value. So now you can kind of play with the W and move around that variation. And you can do the same with all of these textures. Now, caution though, this uh, 4D can very much slow down your texture. Uh, when it comes to loading and previewing an EV, you are gonna get an amount of lag the more 4D and 3D textures you enable. But for now, you, you should be fine and it's gonna work perfectly in cycles. So now we have this so far. Let's go ahead and start making some cracks that's gonna go in this asphalt material. Now you can actually stop here that you already have kind of some asphalt. Now we're gonna go ahead and incorporate some cracks to really make this look really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get this principle here. I'm gonna hit Shift D and duplicate it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, get a mix, M-I-X, mix shader and plop it right there on this line. Now let's take this principle here and plug it into this socket of our mix shader right there. So let's make this a really bright color. So as we're designing, we can kind of see what's cutting through. Let's get this mix shader and go ahead and get in a color ramp here to crunch everything we're gonna place behind it. So let's plug it into the factor. I'm gonna bring it up and we're gonna get in a Voronoi texture here. Now let's go ahead and get that mapping node and plug it into the vector. And then let's plug this distance into the color ramp and switch F1 to distance to edge. So now we can kind of take these in. Now for me, I'm not liking how it's revealing these. So I'm gonna click on the color ramp and flip it. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring this in like this. So let's bring this in, crunch it in. So we uh, have that. Now you can notice how it's kind of faded, not very, it's not a very hard edge. That's super important if we're going to actually dig into and make this look like a crack. So let's go ahead and make this material black just so we can kind of have some shading going on. And then let's take this bump node and I'm gonna duplicate it and let's plug the bump normal into the normal of this bump right here. And we're gonna plug the color of this color ramp right up here that we made into the height of this new bump node. So it's gonna look really weird. What we need to do first here is bring down the strength of our first bump node. Those rocks don't need to be that big. And now you can see how it kind of looks like it's coming out, almost look like it's like a concealer or something like that for asphalt. We're gonna go ahead and click the invert button here on the bump node. So now it's digging into our asphalt, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and bring the roughness all the way up on this material. And we're getting pretty close. Let's go ahead and add some more detail to these cracks. I'm gonna bring the scale up something like this. Um, the cracks are gonna be pretty big. I'm gonna go ahead and take the vector off of this Forno texture because we're gonna do some really fun stuff with a new mapping setup. So we're gonna click on this Voronoi texture and hit Control T. And now we have this new mapping setup. All right, so I've done this a couple times here on the channel. We're gonna go ahead and add some detail to these cracks here. So I'm gonna Shift A, get a uh, noise texture and we're gonna use this noise texture to make these cracks look a little less simple. So now it's all squiggly. We're gonna go ahead and bring our detail up to 10, and it's going a little bit too much of the noise texture. We wanna do something to make it use a little bit less. So we're gonna get in a mix RGB, plug it right there. Now the first thing I do wanna do is I neglected to use the object coordinate here on the texture coordinate, so let's plug that there, and then we'll plug the object coordinate into color two of the mix RGB. All right, cool. So now that we have this, you can use this factor to bring in how much detail you wanna to add to these. So if we bring the factor in this direction, we start adding some more detail here and now they actually look like um, cracks inside of asphalt and that's really cool. Now, whatever detail you wanna to add to the crevices here or the cracks, you can go ahead and do that. Sometimes, sometimes it's maybe it's dirt that's down there. Um, so you can make it a little bit more brown if you want and you can do a lot of other really cool things with this asphalt material. So there you go, that is how you create a procedural asphalt material. Thank you guys for checking that out. I hope you learned some stuff. I wanna take a minute and talk about something that I just launched that I'm super excited about. It's called the Real Time Materials. It's a pack of 150 procedural materials that are made to be rendered fast and speed up your workflow. Let me show it to you. So say you have a scene something like this, and I'm gonna hop on over into Eevee and kind of show you how this works. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, and once you uh, install the zip file that comes with the pack, you'll be able to play with this. So say I wanna get something kind of weird but beautiful. 
we can add this material right here and the materials work in both render engines and they look really great in both engines and so say i can change this base color to something uh maybe something green now we have something really cool like that but we can also do a bunch of other stuff let's head over to the paint and try out uh, paint number 10 we can kind of zoom in and you can see all these little imperfections and things like that and everything you see is editable within these right here including this color we can change the color to a green like this or maybe a dark blue but again all this roughness all these points are super editable here now if you want to edit them I designed these to be really quickly rendered in Eevee so you can play with editing all these parameters here um, let's see play with the scale kind of mess with those gashes play with the scale here mess with some of the size of that and then also here you can really mess with that roughness so they render super fast they preview super fast a lot of procedural materials can really put a damper on your renders these are meant to be super quick super fun and you can go in and just change all types of stuff say right here i want to go shift a and get one of these surfaces that adds these nice imperfections add to that boom really quickly now you can start shading a bunch of cool stuff so you can go ahead and grab that it's linked in the description again thank you guys for checking out the tutorial and i will see you in the next video